everyone, my name is Emily and today I'm going to be doing the final video in the How to Improve Your Art Health series um, that is sponsored by Skillshare, but I will get to that in a second. This final video will be different um, because I'm kind of going to be just spitting off the cuff, kind of podcast style. Uh, um, there may be some cuts here and there, some minor editing, uh, but otherwise... It will be pretty much just me talking about my struggles as an artist uh, that I feel would be a little relatable to you guys. Um, there is a beautiful light autumnal rain dancing outside my window right now, so it's put me in a pretty good mood, which is funny because any kind of rain or snow, or any weather period that isn't sun after Christmas just ruins my whole day. But anyway, uh, I'm in an, an autumny mood. I've got a water. I've got a little caffeine here. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into it. But since this is going to be a longer video, and I may not have your ears for much longer past the five minute mark. True fans will stay past five minutes. Um, <laughs> I got fans. Ugh, ooh, I don't like that word. I'm trying to trying to uh, do my call to action for Skillshare because Skillshare has sponsored this series for me, which is awesome. Um, give Skillshare a lot of credit for looking at my content and going like, okay, I feel comfortable having my my name attached to that, as if Skillshare was a. <laughs> a sentient thing, you know, but, uh, so I really appreciate you, Skillshare. Being that I appreciate you so much, I will make sure to do the call for action in this longer video up front. So, um, here it is. <clears throat> <clears throat> me, me, me. Skillshare is an awesome and interactive website dedicated to helping you learn a new skill. They've got thousands, and I'm not kidding you, they have tons. They've got so many video classes available from art to business and more. What's also great about Skillshare is that they're more affordable than most learning platforms out there. And I mean, period, not just online. Like uh, some of the, even the community courses in my community are more expensive than just the, the annual monthly subscription to Skillshare. Um, their annual subscription is less than $10 a month. That is way cheaper than most people's monthly coffee expense. Lord knows that's true for me. <laughs> and uh, I always throw in a DeBabes thing. And even cheaper than DeBabes, everything, period. Being a mother to a 10-month-old satanic baby, I don't have the luxury to leave the house to take a physical class all the time, but with Skillshare... I can have access to their online classes virtually anywhere because they have an app. Today's piece was created by using the help of the class How to Start an Altered Book Art Journal by Grace Mendez. I did not directly take um, necessarily the lesson and apply it to what I created here today, but I was very much inspired by it. It was still a very fun class to take. I have some other classes lined up in my saved classes folder, so I'm pretty excited to take those. I, I just really genuinely enjoy Skillshare. The first time I was offered a sponsorship, I was just excited. Um, I checked out the interface. Everything looked really nice, uh, flowed really smoothly. Um, but then I started actually using the service and ended up learning a lot of new things, uh, new things about things I already knew about. That sounds strange, but um, I feel like it really broadened uh, – my artistic, I want to say vision, but my, my artistic reach. Um, I learned a lot more about hand lettering both last time and this time. Um, took some courses on uh, collaging and journaling and, and uh, scrapbooking. And so I, I, I genuinely enjoy and use Skillshare. So I do recommend it quite a bit. Um, I have a discount code. The first 500 people to click the link in the description will get their first two months of Skillshare Premium Membership for free. And this last bit is very true. Do not feel like you need an inordinate amount of time or money 
to learn a new skill, Skillshare can help you do it affordably, and my favorite part, on your own time. So, join today. Thank you, Skillshare, so much for sticking with me through this journey. Anyway, let's get on to the meats. The number one struggle that I still struggle with today that I know I will continue to struggle with as my life goes on and something I know all of you struggle with is comparing myself to others. And just like a big heads up, this isn't necessarily how to not do these things. I may throw in coping mechanisms that I have used here and there, but it's generally just me talking about these struggles. Um... I remember the very first time I compared myself to another artist and felt like bad about it and not inspired. I was in sixth grade, which seems kind of late looking back. Maybe I did this earlier, but the earliest I remember. And there was this girl, her name was Kelly, um, and she was an awesome artist and <laughs> like protege level artist, everybody thought her art was so kick ass. And of course, when you're in like sixth and seventh grade, you have a very poor filter. Um, <laughs> so a lot of the time, what would happen would be like someone would see my drawing first and they'd be like, oh my gosh, like you're such a good artist. And you know, like it felt good. I think. I was a little embarrassed. You know, I think all young artists are embarrassed at their artwork. So I'm like, oh, thanks. But then they'd eventually see Kelly's art. And usually the first thing out of their mouth when they'd see Kelly's art and I was in the room, you know, the first thing they'd say is, oh, Kelly, your art is so good. And then the second thing they'd say is they'd turn and look at me and go like, oh, your art is not good. Like, not as good as Kelly's at least, you know. And so then it was like, okay, <laughs> thanks for – on me I appreciate it I didn't bring an umbrella but whatever um and you know sometimes it was mean-spirited but 90% of the time looking back just zero filter on these kids you know and um and I'm not saying I never had moments where I didn't have a filter when I was 11 but I'm just saying like I I know now looking back it wasn't mean-spirited all the time most of the time it was just ignorance like they didn't know you don't say those kind of things to people uh, <laughs> but uh at the time i didn't know that i just thought people were raining on my parade to hurt my feelings um <clears throat> sometimes i had this like notion in my head that they wanted me to stop drawing i guess Maybe not even they. I think it was just some kind of excuse in my head so that I could stop drawing and not feel bad about it. Like, oh, it's not me. I'm just not as good as Kelly, so I'm not going to draw. You know, just flawless logic, clearly. <laughs> but uh, I remember one time in particular, I had drawn a full body um, shot of a anime Sailor Moon looking girl. And Kelly saw it, and she's like, oh, it's pretty good. What's wrong with her legs? They look strange. They look like noodles. And it crushed me because it's one thing if these other people who aren't artists and they're young, they're not art critics or anything like that, are saying things about my art and comparing me. But when Kelly, <laughs> when, you know best naruto sasuke you know cross fiction i don't know artist <laughs> shits on you it's it's terrible <laughs> it's like soul crushing you know that's like if picasso himself came out of this rip in time and just violently accosted you with words about burning you <laughs> oh he was a terrible person <laughs> it just was it was terrible so that that made me stop drawing for a little bit um I remember and I'm so mad at my past self for doing this I remember throwing my sketchbook away in the 
school garbage. So you know if you throw it in a school garbage, you're not getting it back. Do you know how many old pizzas and loogies and whatever else, four locos? <laughs> I don't know. What what do 11-year-olds d- drink? What do they eat nowadays? I, I don't know. Snapchat filters, you're not getting it back. But I wish I would have saved that specific sketchbook um, because it was an actual sketchbook and not a five-star fucking notebook. Um, but, you know, life's a beach. Uh, but that was always very difficult for me. And then um, with the advent of the internet and deviant art, and uh, when Instagram started becoming real, a real profitable place to post your art, you know, that that's always uh, hard too because you're uh, constantly bombarded with amazing artworks and concept. Th- that's what, that is what frustrates me a lot of the times is like these amazing concepts where I'm like, why didn't I think of that first? I hate everyone. I'm going to my bear cave. Peace. Like, sometimes I'll be sitting <laughs> And I'll come up with a concept and I'm like, that is too cool. Like, I don't mean to pat myself on the back, but sometimes I come up with some cool stuff. Sometimes. Um, That is so cool. That has to be a thing. So I'm like Googling ferociously like uh, (laughs) rhinoceros with uh, eyes that are made of crystals, but his teeth are skulls. I don't know. I'm just combining everything that's wrong with me. Um, And I'm like desperately trying to find something else on the internet that exists. And, you know, because I don't want to feel like I'm ripping anyone off. And when I don't find it, there's this like peace of mind. And it's like, for some things, like you can't do a image for image rip. That's absolutely not. That is so not cool. But like something similar, something inspired by is acceptable. I don't know why I, I, nothing is original. Nothing is original anymore. It doesn't exist. It hasn't existed for thousands and thousands of years. It just, it doesn't. So I don't know why I'm so hell bent on like, I don't want to shit on anyone, but at the same time, I want to be original because it's like, I can't, I can't, It it doesn't work that way. You know, again, obviously ripping something exactly or almost exactly is not okay, but throwing something with like the same idea, I I don't think is wrong. You know, I don't think there's such a thing as ripping someone's style, not just because it's impossible. It it really is because no matter what you do, you are going to come out in what you do. That's a quote. Put that somewhere on screen. No matter what you do... (laughs) You are going to come out in what you do. So, you know, it's impossible. But the but not only that, but it's like, again, no, nothing's original. It's impossible. Anyway, I think I'm spending too much time on this one subject and it's drifting off into other directions. But I've, I, yeah, I still compare myself to other artists. I think it's impossible not to. Um, the only good thing that comes from that is actually when I feel... Like, oh, you know, I, this artist is so amazing. I, I want to, I want to be like them. I want to, you know, uh, work, you know, full time like them, you know, that, well, I technically work full time, but I'm not doing like watercolor paintings for my job. I'm a graphic designer. It's different, but, um, you know, it, mm. it, it, it gets us fire in me. <laughs> Sound like Miss Piggy. It gets sets this fire under my butt, and it, and it makes me want to work, and it makes me want to improve. Um, so I think that I, I attribute any success I may have had or have to that, because it it pushes me to do better. Um, and what really pushes me to do better is when I find an artist who may not necessarily have the skills that I do or the awareness that I do or the social media presence that I do, and yet they're still somehow really, really incredibly successful, instead of being like, wait, wait, how does Cardi B say it? Like, uh, instead of like, why did, why that bitch and not me? Instead, I want to be like, how do I get next to that bitch? How do I surpass that bitch? Like, <laughs> I don't remember exactly what she said, but that that's that's what I hear in my head. I hear Cardi B saying, how do I surpass that bitch? So, you know, 
that that is my only recommendation is turning that negative emotion into like hey stop pouting get off your butt go get your sketchbook go go draw some go draw some boobies go go draw some butts and maybe some crotches get crazy get creative with it you know get get your anatomy on par maybe some hands go wild This next one relates a little bit to what I was talking about earlier, and that is feeling like I need to have a style. And now that I am older, I have found a style. I didn't mean to. That's another quote. Put that on screen. I did not mean to. (laughs) It just kind of happened. And it happened after about a year, two years of going... I'm just going to stop worrying about it. <laughs> and it came. It just kind of came and it it it's not it's not something everyone can just have right out the bat. It's not something most, let me say most, there is a handful of people who will develop it in, you know, sophomore year art class. You know, it 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 comes with time, experience, exposure, who you watch who you follow who you're inspired by your atmosphere it comes when it's ready said my husband anyway <laughs> i'm sorry guys I swear i'm i'm 100 sober minded i'm just a little tired and i'm eyeballing the monitor because i don't want babes to wake up He is all comfy cozy in his crib right now. Anyway, um, but yeah, I I tried to force a style onto myself for many, many years, trying to make the most distinct eyes and fingers and colors. And eventually, I just got so overwhelmed with it all. I was just like, enough's enough. I want to do other things. I want to experiment with different styles. I want to be out. Sorry. I want to be able to branch out and, and, and be able to draw realism as well as, you know, pseudo realism as well as, you know, I want to draw fire. I don't know. I just wanted to do different things. And I'm glad I thought about that because then I thought kind of my trademark was, oh, I can kind of do almost everything, you know? Um, and I still, to this day, can kind of do a lot. I don't, you know, ugh, I almost undercut myself, and that's going to be something I talk about later. I can do a lot. If you give me like ten still images of like here, can you draw something that's kind of like this? I can go, okay, yeah, and nine times out of ten, I can do it. So I'm glad I stopped fighting myself and just let myself have time to explore and to. Uh, fill my sketchbook with a bunch of bubble shit, like you know a <laughs> bunch of pictures of hat on back cat if you don't know what that is you haven't been following me on instagram enough um a lot of problems with insecurity period not just like insecure people everybody's insecure in something a lot of problems with basic human insecurity is my dog barking because my husband's home. Doge! Osa, stop! No! Osa, please! Osa, don't! She knows he has pizza. A really big problem with human insecurity is we stress... A lot of the time we stress about things that if we stop stressing about them, they potentially could get better. And that that is not true with everything. My word is not law. I do not think that I'm, if I say something, it's like a definitive 100%, 100% fact. That's just how I feel. And I think finding a style is definitely something that fits in that category. Okay, so moving on. Check my phone like I'm important. Being fearful, I'm drawing the same thing over and over again, which is funny because we just talked about 
a style and a style is essentially incorporating similar elements again and again and again in each new artwork, right? Well, <clears throat> I have a isn't that a bitch fear, which is also like I'm afraid I'm drawing the same thing over and over again and I don't want to bore people. And um, a lot of the time, the things that I draw that get repetitive are the things that I'm most comfortable drawing, the things that when I walk back and look at them, I go, oh, yeah, that's awesome. I really feel good about that. Um, and I think that's true, obviously, for every artist. Um, in one of the other videos, I said, oh, draw what you like to draw. And that's usually what that ends up being is, uh, for me, it is either an animal skull with something glitterly, glitterly, <laughs> glittery or sparkly or crystals or flowers on it, candles behind it, you know, something like that in a frame with a black ink background or a female's head with an empowering quote, something weird happening to her face, something kind of in the uncanny valley happening to her face with a pitch black background, um, that and then in my sketchbook sketchy drawing with like a ballpoint pen and with a bright color background like those those things I am very comfortable drawing they are very aesthetically pleasing sorry for the cuts right there I kind of herpety derped my way through that last bit um you know that I'm comfortable drawing those things but I I like I said, I don't want to bore the people following me with the same things over and over again. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, isn't that why the people follow me? Because they enjoy seeing these things over and over again. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, am I doing it just for them? No, no, no. Because I don't want to limit myself and just get in this hamster wheel sort of artistic, you know, life. But at the same time, I enjoy these things. And there are certain things that I force myself to draw that I hate drawing. I hate you landscapes. I hate I hate drawing landscapes. I'll tell the whole world. Like, I just hate it. But I need to get better at it. But if eventually the majority of my followers are following me for something that I like to draw, I'll never end up drawing landscapes. So what's the point? The point is so that I can do it so that I can be the everything artist if I need to be so that I am more marketable to people who want to give me money. And guess what? Money makes the world go round. <laughs> So it all kind of comes back to that. It all kind of comes back to what is best for my career. I don't want to be the nine times out of ten I could do that person. I want to be the ten times out of ten I could do that person. But I don't think I can. I don't think anybody can. Well, I think there are people that can come close. But, you know, it's it's a constant battle, you know, as you can kind of see. But I, I've kind of gotten to this point where I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to draw what I like. I'm going to draw what I like. And uh, if that means that there is less time dedicated to things that I don't like drawing, that's fine. Um, does it mean I'm not going to attempt to draw those things? No. It just means that I'm doing what I want to do. And the people who care about me and who enjoy my artwork aren't gun say shit, so... That's pretty much, I don't have any advice for that one. Just kind of a, trapped in a paradox for the last two. Um, number four, I think we're on, yeah. Thinking I should conform to trends. This one, this one I've kind of outgrown a little bit more, um, which is funny because I feel like now, again, with the advent of the internet and Instagram, blah, 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 um, there are more trends in art at least in kind of the lowbrow pop surrealism, the pop surrealism art community that I'm sort of a part of. I'm, I'm I don't like to call my art lowbrow art, but I think that's technically what it is. Um, but there are are way more trends with the Instagram artist. Um, side note: What's interesting is I find like IRL came from the galleries. Uh, you know, working the the floor artists have Instagrams that are always popular, but uh, the started on the internet 
artists who show in galleries sometimes, who set up booths a lot of the time at conventions, have uh, more fans than appreciators. I know it's not fair to say they're they're different, but they are. Um, you know, I, I think there's a huge divide between the two, and I have very rarely seen the two worlds meet comfortably in the middle. It's always very uncomfortable. And I've had some uncomfortable experiences with gallery artists that sell their paintings for mondo bucks um that maybe i'll talk about in a sketchbook story time i've got a lot of professional sketchbook story times that i could do that i have planned that i'm going to do um but anyway sorry uh yeah anyway there are a lot more back on track trends nowadays um that are not even like memes just like actual like the the, like i said i'm most comfortable excuse me most comfortable drawing women's heads with empowering phrases blah blah blah. that's really popular you know this kind of very edgy in your face kind of artwork uh that has a a very strong poignant meaning behind it that's popular nowadays um girls with tattoos drawing them very popular skulls and sparklies and very popular so you know i maybe i am inadvertently following trends i don't know this is just what i'm comfortable drawing period and it may be because subconsciously i am following trends but i guess i don't feel pressure then because i am following them i don't know oh and like the doll faces on on girls i did one painting that was kind of like that now that's like when i think of pop surrealism like mab graves like that that's what comes to mind um <clears throat> that's really popular as well uh same face kind of syndrome very popular but uh you know can still be really creative and beautiful and interesting um uh, <clears throat> excuse me i keep clearing my throat like i have important things to say but uh yeah i used to really struggle with trying to conform to trends and not being able to Oh, God. I should pull up some, like, old anime. If I can find them, I will. Little comics I did, like One Piece. Yes, I love One Piece. Kind of like um, fan fix or fan comics or whatever. And I just can't draw anime. I just can't. I started off drawing anime. But then uh, around, like, eighth grade, I started drawing more, like, creepy artwork and demented cartoonish artwork like more american western cartoons and anime um but yeah i never i never was able to draw anime Ooh, that would be a fun video emily tries to draw anime again and ends up having a hernia from all the screaming the last one again i think i will do for the rest of my life but i'm getting very good at catching myself and that is not seeing my value and i see that across the board with so many other artists um, that are successful, that have amazing, gorgeous, beautiful art. Um, a good example, who I, I adore, is um, Audra Auclair, a very, very famous Instagram artist, very famous YouTube artist as well. Just started posting again on YouTube, so that made me very happy. Um she, a lot of the time, she'll post something and then she'll kind of be like, oh, this is just a this and this is just a this and this is only a this and uses a lot of language that really cuts down how great her work really is. And she has talked very openly about her depression. So I know a lot of that could be coming from that. Uh, but I think as artists, we all tend to undercut ourselves. There is another artist that I follow. Um, I don't think I'll name her because uh, this is more of a criticism on her um, business practices. She puts her art, original pieces, and uh, prints and things like that on sale for way, 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 way under what they should be. 
Um, and I know people get angry when artists do this because it's like, oh, then it makes it look like the artists who are selling their prints for real reasonable prices are overcharging. But I just think it's a matter of underselling ourselves and believing our work is at a much lower value uh, in general. And in some cases, it's okay to undersell yourself. Like when you're just starting out, Like, I still consider myself someone who's just starting out, like, with selling my work and selling my art, you know, to kind of gain a momentum of of people purchasing, to gain a momentum in terms of followers. Um, It's okay to undersell it first, but you need to know when to raise your prices. Um, And I see too often big artists who could easily charge a little bit more for their work and, and, you know, really experience more fruit from their labor, um, underselling themselves. And I think it, it, it comes down to the, that insecurity that like, oh, am I really this good? Am I really worth this? Um, <clears throat> you know, so I was about to say when someone halfway across the world is selling a white canvas with a period blood stain on it for like $10,000, you know, but you know, they're artists too. I'm not going to shit on anyone. I'm not going to do Wait, is Daddy home now? She was just barking for show before. Any German shepherd yelling at the door. I, um, yeah, I think it's a it's a matter of insecurity. And uh, I think now more than ever, art has such a big, big presence in people's lives. We are so much more interested in the smaller artists. We are interested in the artists we are attracted to. Pe- not like their, their artwork, obviously. Um, it doesn't matter how many followers they have. You know, I will purchase something from someone if I like their artwork. Um, so I, I, I do think there is this renaissance going on right now because of the internet. God, can I stop? jerking the internet off but it's true it's an art renaissance going on right now um because everybody is appreciative of beautiful art that that looks good to them um and i think uh, i don't think it's greedy i don't think it's being mongry mongry hungry (laughs) money hungry to want to get compensated for your hard work does that mean i want uh thousands of dollars for a tiny watercolor piece I did no it just means that I I need to catch myself before I make something super cheap when I busted my ass on it and I know on the flip side of that coin you could definitely say like oh Emily like what about artists who oversell themselves and I'm gonna say to you since art is subjective you can't really oversell yourself um you can in the way that people will be like, wow, this person is highly full of themselves. They are very arrogant. But um, like for certain other practices, there are standards, like industry standards and pricing and things like that where like it's it's possible to oversell yourself and what your skills are. Um you know, and, and, and wages are subjective to a degree as well. But like with art, it's kind of like, you know, you can't. It's just, you know, and I know people will disagree and be like, well, I know someone who's a terrible artist, but she thinks she's amazing, but she's a slut. And to that, I have to say to you, what? And then also like, oh, well, <laughs> like, you know, maybe that means people won't purchase her stuff, but uh you know, somebody somewhere is going to buy what she's selling at some point because maybe they haven't seen any better. Maybe they don't know anyone who can do any better. Um, but yeah, so that's that's how I feel about overselling it. So, you know, as long as you're not being a douchebag about it and, and you know, I'm better than everyone else and everyone else is feeble and uh garbage person so as long as that doesn't happen and that's just like a social thing that isn't even an art thing that's just like hey let's not but anyway that is my opinion all of this is essentially opinion based on my personal experience um and i know some of it a lot of it most of it is not advice to improve your art health um but i made this 
So you can see, if you are experiencing these things, you're really not alone. (laughs) Pretty much all artists that I know in real life, that I know over the internet, experience this all the time. All, All five of these things and more. So less about advice and how to fix these things but like just how to deal with them and how I've dealt with them and and interesting stories that came up because of it you know um your art health is really important but your art health stems a lot off your mental health and uh your ability to take care of yourself um and sometimes that's not always possible you know like sometimes you need to lean on other people Sometimes your mental health isn't in the greatest state, and it's not your fault. You know, it's um, it's the, the hand you were given, and it doesn't make you a drop less of a human than anybody else. And it's sad to me that uh, that our our art, something that heals us and and makes us whole and makes us who we are for the most part, artists, um, drawers, whatever you want to call us, uh, hinges so tightly upon like like how well we're doing because it, it would be lovely if we could just create art whenever we wanted and then it would be perfect. Then it's like, oh, I am going through a really rough patch in my life. Let me create art and it'll magically make me better. But it doesn't work that way. And that's just total bullshit. Um, And, you know, don't get me wrong. It it can work that way sometimes, you know, probably a good amount of time for most people. But but it isn't always this magic wand, fix them all thing. But it's like, I don't know, sometimes it really frustrates me when I'm just in a really bad mood. It's like, I want my drawing, I want my art, I want my painting to make me feel better, but sometimes it's like I can't muster muster the poof to make it, to make it art, you know? So, <clears throat> I guess that's, I don't know. I always leave on this note of like, you're all wonderful, and shit is garbage. <laughs> But you're all wonderful. Put that another quote. Put it on the screen. Put it on a t-shirt. Shit, garbage. But you're all wonderful. <laughs> oh man. Ah. Let me know if you enjoyed this style of discussion. This kind of podcasty discussion. Who the fuck am I talking to? This podcasty style kind of commentary. I know it is a very long video. And for those of you who sat through all of it, thank you so much. Kiss you on your feet. Just kidding. That's gross. Don't know where they've been. Um, <clears throat> because this is this is like me. <laughs> the Emily you see in the videos is me. Just like definitely a more concise, edited me. Um, <clears throat> and this is just me hanging out, relaxing, maxing all, cool and all, shooting some b-ball. I thought I was cool when a couple of guys, they were up no good. Started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got a one little fight and my mom got scared. Is it moving with your auntie and uncle Barra? They're rare. <laughs> what the? All right, yeah, this is me. <clears throat> and I do often break out in the Prince of Bel Air theme song. It is a common occurrence. I, po- I apologize wholeheartedly to John over at Skillshare for having to watch this entire video to make sure I didn't say some horrible things in it i did bleep out all the naughty words like a good girl so thanks skillshare don't forget guys link in the description first 500 first two months premium free good service i truly believe in it it's empowering artists i really believe that i have the app on my phone but um yeah i was thinking about starting a podcast and maybe inviting other youtube artists to talk about themselves on said podcast i have not seen that done yet not like specifically art related um but yeah you guys let me know what you think and uh 
Hypothetically, who would you like to see on this said podcast? Also, my store is open. Maybe I should have said this at the beginning of my video. My store is open. I've got charms. I've got earrings. I've got prints. I want to get stickers, but I'm still kind of shopping around for that. Um, and I do have originals as well, a couple. And I'm having a really fun time making these charms and earrings and things like that. So smash that merch button, Jake Paul the subscriber, and Maverick the ham sandwich away. Usually I know to end a video when I don't know what I'm talking about anymore, so that's probably what I'm going to do right now. Again, let me know if you guys like the style of just shooting the shit kind of commentary. My other videos take so much longer because they are much more highly polished and, uh, quite frankly, probably better quality. These are easier to put out maybe once a month. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.